<laughs> I am. After how many years? Uh, 1981 was my first church. Okay. And so tell me a little bit about that process of sensing a call to ministry, what it was, what you felt sensed a call to, and has it turned out, well, we'll just start with that. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, when I was a teenager and when I was in uh, university, I worked at Camp Jordan down in uh, Shelburne County, Nova Scotia, and I really enjoyed uh, that type of work, working with kids and working in that kind of a setting and uh, just teaching and doing everything that goes with it. And so really felt at that time I was thinking of going into education. And I did, and I taught school for a year and decided that wasn't for me, that uh, I felt more like I wanted to be involved in uh, teaching something more important than mathematics. Now, I know for some people, I know mathematics is important, but um, I wanted to be teaching the Bible. So I felt called to go back to the Divinity College and get my degree in, uh, in religious education. So my first two jobs were in uh, Christian education, director of Christian education, and director of youth too, along with that, both things. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, to complete the call, I, I was always unsure, uh, just because of the way I felt, whether I was really called into ministry, and, and um, so at one point, it was about, I was four years not in the ministry, and then three years in another church, and at the end of that, I decided, now I'm going to go back and study something else, I'm not called. And I was working at Green Hill Lake Camp that summer, and I was doing maintenance, and I was just walking around the campgrounds, and um, I heard a voice as clear as anything. Um, you don't want to go back to university. Your heart is in Christian education ministry. And so that really um, changed my focus at that point, and uh, the sense that I was indeed called to this ministry, this type of work. So has it worked out the way you thought it would, or, is it been, or how has it been different if it wasn't the same? Um, worked out the way I thought from the beginning, you mean, early no, on? Maybe from when you heard that voice. Oh, well, from when I heard that voice, it wasn't a year later that I got a job uh, working at the Baptist Convention as director of training. So that was like confirmation that, um, you know, God had indeed uh, called me into... Um, Christian education ministries in the church. So what ministries have you served over your career, your pastoral career? Then? I was at, at Nashua Access Baptist Church for four years as uh, director of uh, Christian education and youth. Mostly it seemed to be more youth at that church. It often depends on the ministry. And then um, I was at Greenwood Drive Baptist Church here in Fredericton for three years. And in this in the same field, but also <laughs> I was part-time church treasurer, or part-time church office administrator too, and so that just got to be too much. So, um, And then I was director of training at uh, the convention office in St. John for eight years, and then involved a lot of traveling around and uh, just uh, doing training in churches and doing other convention type ministries. And then I was at uh, Petakodiak, and I was there for nine years and four months, and I've been here for nine years and five months, so this has been my longest ministry at Grace Memorial. Oh. In uh, Petakodiak, I did children and music ministries, and it was a lot of hands-on, and uh, got worn out pretty easily as I started to get older. It was very, very busy, but it was a great church and I loved it there. Okay. What was uh, some of your highlights of serving as director of youth and family, or director of family? It was youth? training, director of training. Director yeah. of Christian training for, yeah. for uh, well, we call it CBAC now, I guess. Some of the highlights? Yeah. What did you enjoy about serving all of our churches? Um, I really enjoyed visiting churches and doing uh, training events in churches. Um, that was exciting. 
a lot of my work then revolved around the Sunday school, and there are very few Sunday schools left in our churches anymore. And uh, things have changed a lot, but I was one of these old-time Christian educators and, and really enjoyed Sunday school. And uh, I, I hate to see it go by the wayside, but I know it's not very relevant for the way things are done today. But uh, that was good, traveling around. I also enjoyed working on the convention assembly and uh, meeting all the people there, greeting people and uh, helping out with the planning of that and uh, just uh, working with the great office staff that was there. So how did you come to be a part of the ministries here at Grace? Well, when I was at the convention office I was working with a pastor by the name of Doug Hateman for a couple years and he was so warm and welcoming when I began there and we worked together on a couple of projects and worked well together. And uh, so one year at convention, um, he came to me and he said, I got to talk to you. I said, okay. Um, because at that point, I was thinking of leaving Petakodiak because uh, the senior pastor had left and we had worked together there for nine years. Uh, so it was, or eight years, I guess. It was. I felt it was time to move on at that point, and uh, the church had been looking for a couple of years for somebody to fill the position of family ministries here. So we had a chat, and so I submitted my my uh, resume and uh, met with the committee, and and I love Fredericton. I had no problem with coming back to Fredericton. Sometimes I, I wonder, you have to juggle, is this where God wants me or is this where I want to be? Okay. So it's that kind of a struggle at first. Good. Tell me what it was like those first couple of years just adjusting to a new ministry, a new congregation here at Grace. Well, it was a total change from uh, ministry I had been involved in previously. Um, I found the church here quite formal um, in style. Uh, uh, Petakodiak was very, um, well, more of a rural church, and um, and working with the pastor I worked with there, uh, we used to joke around a lot, and uh, we had uh, some great, great times in that church. So it was it was a little bit different in that way. Although a lot of the people in Petakodiak were quite formal in their style of worship, as well, but um, it was a very different kind of church setting than um, here at Grace. So it was getting, we had about the same amount of kids that came on Sunday morning. There, there weren't that many children on Sundays. Um, so it was just getting to know people was the hardest part, I guess, and getting to find out where I fit in in ministry here. And that took a little while to, to do that. Yeah, your role has changed over the years. Yes, it has. Quite how, a bit. how has your role changed? Well, it's interesting that uh, the reason I left Petakodiak was because I was involved in music and children's ministry and finding it so busy and so so rushed all the time and and I was getting tired and uh, that's the way it's kind of ended up the last couple of years. I've been involved in children's ministry here and in um, uh, worship ministries and finding it busy again. So it seems like I kind of morphed the job into what I was already doing in Petakodiak. I will say it's been more relaxing here than it was in Petakodiak though. Okay. Good. So what are your favorite, what are some of your favorite moments over the last nine years? I've always said my favorite week of the year is Vacation Bible School Week. And I, I still think that's true. I uh, thoroughly enjoy Vacation Bible School. And here, one year we had over 100 kids, and we had over 30 leaders, children and youth. And it was just, people were buzzing around the church, coming in and out, and it was just um, energizing. And I'm an introvert, but I found that energizing, being with all of people and, and seeing what was going on that week. So um, I guess the children, and children's summer camps have been great. And uh, uh, really enjoy the worship team. I think uh, we've really developed something 
kind of nice right now and uh, feel very positive about uh, what we're doing. One of the things I've really enjoyed about this church is that group of, I used to call them young people, but now they're probably in their late 20s and 30s in this church. There's a strong group of, of people within that, within that age group and they've all got good leadership abilities and they're involved on so many committees and, and that's um, an age in most churches that's missing from the church. So having that, uh, that age group and having them involved in leadership is a real positive thing for this church, I think. You started a new ministry a few years ago called Graceland? Yes. Yeah, it was Peter's suggestion. <laughs> and I thought at the time, well, I don't know if it would work, but let's try it. And we've run it, was it four or five years? I'm not sure. And we've had parents as helpers, and then there have been a few key people in the church. Uh, Peter's helped, you've helped, and Kendall and uh, Ragnar, and uh, a few other people have volunteered some, some hours as well. And uh, they're a great bunch of kids. And uh, the interesting thing was, is that We've had kids that have come to summer camps, and then when we started Graceland, we started with a, just a handful of kids who knew us, and they were coming mostly from Connaught Street School. Uh, but eventually that spread out, and other people started hearing about it, and we, we had a lot of new immigrants that their children have been coming to Graceland. Mm -hmm. And we meet for two hours after school on Wednesday afternoon, and last year was our biggest year for the school. We were bringing about 22 kids over from the school. This past year, until COVID hit, of course, and then that was the end of that. But uh, we would average uh, 26 or 28 children, and uh, the majority of them were from Connaught Street School. So that was a very positive thing, I think. Yeah. How's the church changed over your time? Uh, yeah, I think it has changed. Yeah, changed a lot. Well, change senior pastors, and that changes. We've changed our structure in the way of uh, administrative structure, um, the way we do things together in groups and uh, committees and teams, I guess, now, instead of uh, the, the boards and committees. So that's changed. Um, uh, I, I think there's been a little bit of a relaxing, maybe, um, when I first came here, I used to hear more negative things about the contemporary music than I hear now. And uh, I do hear how people still love their organ, though, and that's, that's fine. Um, and uh, I have enjoyed Julie as well on the organ. Um, so, yeah, there have been some changes. I remember back when I first moved here, I'm making into trouble for saying this, but the kitchen was locked and the parlor was locked. Not locked, but the parlor was closed and kids weren't supposed to come into the parlor and kids weren't supposed to use the kitchen. And now I never hear anybody complain about kids being in the parlor or in the kitchen. So that's, I think, a good thing. Um, I really think Grace Memorial needs to focus more on children and youth ministries, and especially when it comes to space. Children's, children and youth dedicated spaces. The uh, youth room is too small for the youth. The children's ministry is just all spread out into little classrooms, basically, and, and using the same space that everybody else uses in the, in the family center. Um, so uh, that's one area, I think, that, uh, that could be looked at in the future. What do you see as the strengths of Grace? The people, uh, there is a great group of people in their 70s and in their 80s who give so faithfully to this church. Like a church this size to carry the budget that it carries, I think is amazing. To have the staff that they have two full-time pastors and a um, not quite full-time office administrator, but it's pretty, uh, it's a lot of hours for a church uh, of this amount of a size of a congregation. 
which I think the setting or where it's located is a strength, even though it's out of sight. Um, it's in a neighborhood where there's a lot of potential for outreach and uh, just getting involved in the community. What are you going to miss when you're finished? Mm, what am I going to miss? Well, being busy, probably. I'm a person that feels better the more I do. Uh, and the more I'm involved and the more active I am. Um, so I'm going to miss that part just in general. Um, not necessarily because of this church, but just for being busy. So I'm going to have to find things to keep me busy. I'm going to miss the people. There are some people that, um, you know, just build me up every week. Uh, I think that's great. I'm really going to miss the kids. Like, I don't know what I'll do without Destiny's hugs. You know, I say I don't like hugs, but when Destiny comes up and hugs me around the legs, uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's great. Uh, such a sweet kid. And um, other children like that in our congregation, too. Uh, I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the kids. Yeah. What's next? Uh, sleep for three months. It's uh, the bears hibernate in the winter. I'm going to hibernate this summer. <laughs> no, I've. Uh, I uh, hope to once churches get back to some kind of normalcy, once there are um, services, or uh, I would like to. Um, do some fill-in preaching in churches that need uh, somebody to fill in. Um, I will try and settle in one church, but I'd like to be available on most Sundays to uh, fill in speaking in different congregations, or if there's somebody looking for somebody for a couple months, to do that for a couple months too. And I may have to get a job as a greeter at Walmart when the money runs out. But. <laughs> Now it's security at Walmart, not a greeter. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. Good. Oh, okay. So other things that you'd like to share? Um, just like to say thank you to everybody uh, for being so generous. Um, you know, for just little things like birthday cakes and um, um, sticky buns and... Uh, things like that that people have done for me and uh, all the help. Some people have been very helpful. The staff's great here and Dale working with her for so many years. Um, and I don't like to mention names because I'll forget somebody. But um, and Peter and, and Doug and now Lisa and Robin. Of course Robin Randall and I have been friends for years since she was probably 19 years old. So it's been a while. Mm. and uh, just all the help that she has been. Uh, but it's, a, it's a great place to work, and, and I will miss you, and I'll probably come back some Sunday when, um, when there's an actual uh, Sunday worship service going on that you can sing and talk to people, and I won't shake hands, but, <laughs> and I won't hug, but I'd like to come back and say hi to everybody. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay.